Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Well, I watched it, and I'm not very proud of it. Paul Blart Mall Cop 2. The sequel to the original Paul Blart Mall Cop with Kevin James from the King of Queens, as well as a stand up comedian who winds up playing a mall security cop. You know, working at a local mall in New Jersey. He also lives with his mother and his daughter named Maya. He also has a hypokalemic and very overweight. Yeah. Not to mention he had a love interest named Amy. Which also plays like sort of a diehard parody if you think about it. But there was a lot of slapstick, you know, mostly dumb ridiculous and stupid but I have to admit I did enjoy the original that I mean as as silly as this film was it actually had a lot of fun to it it, it had a lot of heart a lot of crazy situations a lot of dumb slapstick you know mostly involving uh, Paul just doing a lot of funny and <laughs> silly stuff especially when he was actually uh, trying out the, <laughs> the Guitar Hero inside the mall and and he tried to stop all these uh, bad guys and of course his trusty Segway that he rides on you know everywhere he goes he rides on the Segway yeah. <laughs> it was fun to be honest I mean it's not the greatest comedy ever made but I've seen worse, a lot worse. And this sequel made it up for it. In fact, it had a lot of bad press coming from critics everywhere. In fact, it was actually banned in Russia. Or were they lucky? It had a 6% on Rotten Tomatoes and 13% on Metacritic. Yep. So that means that not many people love this movie and it shows and you know what I agree it's without a doubt the worst sequel ever made and yes it's even worse than Hot Tub Time Machine 2 <laughs> well because they just put a lot of crap into it and this time it's set in Las Vegas, which is inside the Wynn Las Vegas, which is owned by Steve Wynn. So this is like the first film that's actually shot inside the Wynn Resort and Casino. And not to mention he even make a cameo appearance too. And this was also the first film which in Nevada they actually got their film tax credit for it. Isn't that funny? Yeah, and once again, this movie also became, like the first movie, it's also a surprising successful hit. Yeah, but you know what? I like the first movie more than this. Because this one, oh, it's just 93 minutes of pure disaster. I'm not kidding, it is. It was not funny. You know, the jokes were lame. More of the same stupid cliches that they went into. And and a whole lot more. It stars Kevin James, Rainy Rodriguez from all the Disney Channel shows and movies. She's also the sister of actor Rico from Modern Family. Neil McDonald. You know, who's in the film 88 Minutes. I know he plays a lot of villains in films like this. Danilo Alonso. David Henry. From all the Disney Channel shows as he's been in. I know he was he did the voice of the character in the movie The Secret World of Arietti, which I love. Lonnie Love from the TV show World's Dumbest. She's also a stand-up comedian. And I know she's on that TV show called The Real, that talk show. D.B. Woodside, 
Nicholas Taturo, Gary Ballantyne, Anna Gasher, and Shirley Knight. It's written by Nick Bacay and Kevin James, and it's directed by Andy Figman, the same director who went on to do films like She's the Man with Amanda Bynes, the two films with Dwayne Johnson and aka The Rock, called The Game Plan and Race to Rich, Mo Race to Rich Mountain, and of course went on to do some terrible films such as You Again, and he's also a feeder director. He did an adaptation of Reefer Madness as a movie musical. And he even created the Internet Icon, which is an American Idol for YouTube. And it failed after two seasons. <laughs> yeah, no wonder it sucked. The movie begins, which actually happened six years ago, which things were a lot better in the first movie which is actually cut short this time around. Paul Blart, who's played by Kevin James, is recovering from several misfortunes that's really happening to him already. His wife Amy, who was played by John Mays, had divorced him within six days into their marriage. And his mother Margaret, who's played by Shirley Knight, had once up being run over by a milk truck and was killed. So suddenly he receives an invitation to the security officer convention in Las Vegas and begins his luck by bringing in his daughter Maya Blard, who's played by Randy Rodriguez, who's already discovered that she's being accepted into UCLA and actually plans to move in across the country to Los Angeles. But part of her father's invitation was she decided to to keep this a secret between them. So they actually fly to Las Vegas by accommodated at the Wynn Hotel in which is a, um, a resort and casino hotel that was owned by Steve Wynn. Paul wants a meeting the general manager who was an attractive young woman named Divina who's played by Danella Alonzo. He also thought that that she was actually flirting with him. He was already dating a hotel head of security named Araldo. Meanwhile, Maya wants to fall in love with the hotel ballet named Lane, who's played by David Henry, which another security guard from the Mall of America actually had attended the convention. And yeah, that also includes Donna Ericone, who's played by Loni Love. And he was actually aware of Paul's heroics by saving the West Orange Pavilion Mall, which he actually did in the previous movie. And he actually suggested Paul chosen to become the note speaker at the event. But it was also revealed that another security guard named Nick Morano, played by Nicholas Satoro, is given the speech that night. Which, of course, we, but something did happen to him because he wants to going out at a date with another girl and got drunk. But suddenly, a criminal named Vincent, who's played by Neil McDonald, and along with a gang of crooks, ones of disguising as hotel employees, are actually plotting to steal a priceless work of art from the hotel and replace them with, with a lot of replicas. So Paul, in the meantime, has become very overprotected of Maya, after discovering, you know, that he's she's actually wants to fall in love with Lane and all the spies that's that's part of the conversation. He began to, to suspect that Arado, which he has his lack of professionalism in the event, when they actually found out that that the hotel security had notified where Maya was missing. But it becomes a whole big of a deal once he had a whole argument with Maya only claiming that he actually received a secret behind his back he wanted to attend at UCLA but Paul actually refuses and that's what leads to this uh, bigger problem by not speaking to him so by the time they went to the convention Paul wants up 
hanging out with Donna along with a few other security guards just to check to see all the security equipment on display until he actually found out that Maya and Lane are actually kidnapped by these gang of crooks. So he thought the only way to actually uh, save them and trying out the, the safe way that you saw in the uh, in the first movie but there's even more of that in this lousy sequel but of course you know he wants a passing out because of his hypoglycemic condition that he's been getting over the years where he actually drops down on the floor and wants up tasting a little girl's uh, melting ice cream cone which was strawberry by the way and and then once he woke up, you know, setting up all the equipment that he needs in order to save his daughter, Maya and Lane. He has to go around stopping all these bad guys and by coming up with all these equipment that he has, you know, just actually using the taser and, and <laughs> you know, actually started shooting um, marbles and all this uh, <laughs> sticky uh, glue and... And all those other crazy stuff that he has to do. Especially the ones that he shoots with with those uh, with those pads that, that you saw in the uh, the beginning of the movie where he was playing one of those games. You know, he even had to use the drones to actually search on all the, the criminals who are actually stealing all these paintings and replacing them. And all this other crap that they went into. So yeah, that's pretty much what the movie is all about. And... And there, there was a lot of things that just went wrong with it. You know, the villain in the movie, as we're familiar with, you know, actually had um, only one eye that's brown. The other eye is just blue. You know, just goes around trying to steal all the paintings and come up with his own stupid plans and, and actually spotted uh, his daughter along with Lane and they all got trapped. Well... Paul was just going around, you know, already feeling bad about this because, you know, he wanted to protect his daughter, you know, from danger. Goes around just doing all these crazy stuff. He even had to fight with a bird outside, you know, while the piano player was playing. And that goes on for like two minutes at this point. It was really lame. Yeah, and, yeah, and of course, there were some CGI shots of that too with with the animals and there were a lot of oh a lot of stupid uh, crap that went into it and Bobby one of his uh, security guards you know, I, I know one of them actually had a weird haircut yeah because he was like prematurely bald but you see the back of his hair all the, all the way even worse there was even a scene where Paul was actually about to chase one of the bad guys and they went into an actual show where he's actually dressed up by using those wings and actually kicking all the performers even the bad guy out into the water he, I mean he was already in disguise mostly because he was trying to go after him and everybody actually saw it too and then and they were amazed yeah and then there was even one scene where after he spotted the um, his daughter already being kidnapped by Vincent. You know, he wants to bring in the whole team around just to fight against his other team. And it just goes on and on and on. And, and most of it was just pretty lame the way they did this. And then he had to go chase uh, them around by going from one building to the next. You know, as they try to hook up uh, the hook. Um, so he had to swing around the wire had a knot in it so that's why he couldn't move until he tried and very scary and then he even uses the gun that has all that sticky glue on there uh, also Maya even found out that that Vincent's actually had a uh, oatmeal allergy so that means that she had to use that, that oatmeal cream and ripe, ripe it up all of his face and that's where he reveals all that allergy that went into it and, and yeah he took him down <laughs> oh, this is going to just go on for hours. I mean, this is just lame, stupid, dumb, pointless, not funny at all. 
I only maybe laugh at a few chuckles here and there, but not much. Because it was just fucking stupid. No wonder this movie became this bad. It's not funny at all. Even the ending stinks. Where, you know, after uh, her daughter actually went to UCLA, uh, he wants up meeting um, a police officer who's, who's a woman already riding on the horse, and the horse actually kicks him back into the car. You could tell that they used some bad CGI in there. And, yep, there you have it. Oh, the first movie had a lot of heart that went into it, despite of being, you know, silly with all the slapsticks they went into. I mean, it, it actually plays itself right. And the fact that he actually got married to Amy because he was more attractive. What the hell? They had to come up with a cash grab for a lousy sequel like this? Just so, after it made more money, that they had to come up with this crap. Unbelievable. You know, you know what? I, I had enough with this. I mean, if you love Paul Blart Mole Cop, I think you're going to be disappointed with this one. Because, let's face it, it sucks. It really does. I'm pretty certain there are a few people that like the sequel. Not to me. I think I'd rather, you know, stare at a wall instead. <laughs> oh well. Well, that's Paul Blart Mark Cop 2, and, and I'm going to give this movie zero stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later, much later. Bye.